y'all, Miss Mayhew here, and I am gonna go over some of these practice chi-square problems with you guys so that you can check and see how you're doing. So this first question states, in a large public school, the total number of students is 3,670. You expect the ratio of boys to girls to be the same. So my null hypothesis would be that the observed number of students of males and females would be the same. Now remember, chi-squares allow for a reasonable amount of randomness. So our null hypothesis states that the number of boys and girls will be the same. Um, that means within reason, within this reasonable range. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, will be that the observed number of boy students and girl students will not be the same. So in this particular example, there are two categories that the students could fall for this data, either female or male. So the first category would be to be a boy, and the second would be to be a girl. Now we would expect that half of the students would be boys and half would be girls. So I would multiply the total number of students, 3,670, by 0 0.50 or 50% in order to get my expected value for both boys and girls. Now our second example is that a school of 3,700 students publicizes that the proportion of its students who are involved in at least one extracurricular activity is 61%. So our null hypothesis is going to be that they're right and that the numbers fall within a reasonable range of that 61%. So my null hypothesis would be the observed number of students that are involved in at least one extracurricular activity are the same as what's posted on the website. My alternative hypothesis is going to be that those numbers of students that are observed to be in at least one extracurricular activity would be outside of that range of acceptable randomness so that it would not be the same as what's posted on the website. So in this case, we have two categories that students could fall in. Either they are involved in at least one extracurricular activity or they are not involved in at least one extracurricular activity. So my first category is that they are involved in an extracurricular activity. Now it's publicized that 61% of those students are um, involved in at least one activity. So I would take my total number of students, 3,700, and multiply it by the expected proportion, which is 0.61 and that will give me what I would expect. My second category is that they are not involved in at least one activity. So if 61% of my students are involved, then that means 100 minus 61 would not be involved, or 39%. So in order to get the number of students that are expected to not be involved, I will take the total number, which is 3,700, and multiply it by 0.39 or 39% to find the expected number of students that would not be involved in at least one extracurricular activity. My third example is a poker dealing machine is supposed to deal cards at random as if it were from an infinite deck. In a test, you counted 1,600 cards and observed the following. Spades, 404, hearts, 420, diamonds, 400, and clubs, 376. Now, if you are expecting it to be an infinite deck and to be dealt randomly, you would expect for the numbers of each of the four suits to be equal to each other. So my null hypothesis would be that the number of cards in each suit would be the same. My alternative hypothesis would be that the number of cards in each suit are not going to be the same. In this case, we have four categories that a card could fall in. 
either spades, hearts, diamonds, or clubs. Because I'm expecting them to all be equal, then I would expect each of them to have 25%. So what I'll do is I will multiply the total number, or 1600, by 0.25, or 25%, for each of them. My last example is that a genetics engineer was attempting to cross a tiger and a cheetah. She predicted a phenotypic outcome of the traits she was observing to be in the following ratio. Four stripes only, three spots only, nine both stripes and spots. When the cross was performed, she counted the individuals she found with 50 stripes only, 41 with spots, and 85 with both. Now, the tricky part about chi-squares with genetics is that you are looking at whether or not the observed ratio is the same as the expected ratio. So in this case, she's expecting that 4 to 3 to 9 ratio. So my null hypothesis would be that the observed outcome and the observed number of individuals will follow this expected ratio. My alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, is going to be that the observed number of individuals does not follow the predicted ratio. And this example has a few extra steps to find the expected number. The first thing I'm gonna do is list out my categories. So my three categories in this example are stripes only, spots only, or both. Now, looking at my ratio at the top, I have four, three, and nine. So in order to find my percentage, I'm gonna need to total up those numbers. So I'm gonna add four plus three plus nine and get 16. So for stripes, I would expect four out of 16. For spots, I would expect 3 out of 16, and for both, I would expect 9 out of 16. That gives me my percentages, or my fractions, that I would expect. Now, just like in the other examples, I'm going to multiply that by the total. This example doesn't straight up tell me the total, but it does tell me the results. I can add up the 50 that were stripes, the 41 that were spotted, and the 85 that had both to get my total, which adds up to 176. So now I'm gonna multiply that total that we just counted up by the ratio, which we figured out before, for each of the categories. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it helps you out. If you have any more questions, feel free to email your teacher. Bye.